Hello everyone, I'm Helene from Heart House Astrology and I just wanted to thank Nadia for having me today. I'm so excited to be here for the second time. Nadia, you're amazing and I love you and thank you for allowing me to do another video for your channel. I'm just so grateful for that opportunity. You've been an inspiration to me forever. So thank you, Nadia. And today, so what are we talking about? Well, we're going to talk about abundance and how to create more joy and abundance in your life based on your natal chart. So today we're going to look at a point called the part of fortune, and it's calculated using your ascendant, moon, and rising sign different calculations depending if it's a day or night chart but if you have a copy of your chart just look for a symbol a glyph that looks like this okay a circle with a little cross in it if you don't have your chart and you need to find the calculation you can go to astroseek.com and they do have a calculator for that okay so what is the part of fortune well in order to find more abundance in your life the part of fortune is this point that if we put effort into it we can create abundance so it's similar to Jupiter but it requires work it requires more work and effort okay and with the part of fortune this is our spot where we feel joy where we feel harmony and this is where we can create our niche to attract more abundance into our life. Now, you do wanna pay attention to any um, planetary aspects that are in the natal chart to the part of fortune. So for instance, you know, if your sun is conjunct the part of fortune, or, you know, if you see Jupiter this year is going to do a con con transit it and conjunct the part of fortune or by progression. So you always want to look at transits and progressions through the part of fortune as well to see when you might have some lucky opportunities on the horizon for you. But you also can look at um, if you have Ven uh, Venus as a ruler of the part of fortune. So if um, it's in Taurus or Libra, this is also very positive as well, but you don't have to have that to work with the energy. So how do you work with the energy? Well, you have to put effort into the house that it's in. So we're gonna go through the houses to see which house your part of fortune is in and how can you best utilize that energy. Also, when we talk about the part of fortune, we have to talk about the opposite point to that because all planets and points are in um, in an opposite position to a polarity, a, the opposite energy. So it's an axis, you know, if for instance, what is the Aries, the beginning of the Zodiac, the Aries is opposite of the Libra. So it's, it's integrating those two energies. And I'll talk about that as we go through the houses. Okay. So if your part of fortune is in the first house, how do you create more abundance? Well, you have to be more self-driven. You have to do what's right for you. This could be, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, you know, living life in, on your own terms. Now, how do you get blocked? Well, if you, you know, are letting others heavily influence you, okay? Because your fortune lies in, in your true calling and honoring yourself. So just for instance, you have a son in Libra, but you're part of fortunes in the first house, you know, that might be more difficult because you have a strong sense of that Libra energy. Um, but regardless of where your sun is, um, or, you know, Venus or any strong planets, you do want to see what house that part of fortune is in. And if it is an Aries, you know, you need to be a go-getter. You need to work hard at, um, doing things that make you feel good and bring you joy and to not allow other people to influence you. Stick to your guns. Okay, part of fortune in the second house. 
Now, the second house part of fortune is asking you, what is valuable to you? You know, you have to know your worth and you need to, you know, know how much to charge, you know, uh, not underestimate that, you know, focusing on um, aligning with people and companies and that sort that you truly feel aligns with. So, you know, you can't work with a company that you feel in to like not in alignment with. That's not going to bring you joy. <laughs> it's kind of intuitive, but you know, that's really um, what you need to focus on. Now, the block, the impersonal point would be in the eighth house. So, um, you know, not trusting and connecting with people, not, not, you know, not trusting your investments. So it's, it's finding an integration and balance between those two archetypes and those two houses of the eighth and second house. And then if your part of fortune is in the third house, I have my part of fortune here. It's, it's about, you'll find your abundance and joy if you can communicate, write, speak. You have to share your ideas. Maybe you're teaching what you've learned. The block for a third house part of fortune is being too idealistic having these grandiose ideas, but not being able to practically ground them, to manifest them and to put them into teaching moments. So finding a balance between that and sharing what you, your own unique story and your own unique perspective. If your part of fortune is in the fourth house, you will find your abundance when you focus on, you know, home and family and you know cultivating inner secure inner emotional security this this is even beneficial for working at home the the block that you can um that you have to work through is feeling impatient towards career goals and you know it's all a balance you can't rush it you have to do things that feel right to you um, and not just kind of like, oh, take any opportunity because it's a good opportunity. It has to really resonate with you at a deep level and feel secure about those decisions. Now, if your part of fortune is in the fifth house, this is the house of creativity. This is amazing if you want to be an entrepreneur. This is a great aspect for being an entrepreneur for any creative endeavor, also very good for working with children. So focusing on that will bring you joy and happiness and you'll, and it's a good area to kind of find your niche that way. Now, if you want to, um, you know, where you have to find that balance is the 11th house. So, you know, you want to do what's right for you, do what feels good to you and not worry about what your friends say or what a group might think. You know, those will be your blocks, you know, if you're following along those lines. If your part of fortune is in the sixth house, it is a call for you to be of service. And if you, you know, the more you're being of service, you can, find your joy and abundance in the service industry. Also, you know, it's very important that you have um, concrete systematic routines in your day to day living um, and not just um, space out or engage in self sabotaging behavior. Um, that's going to throw you off. That's going to be your block. Seventh house part of fortune you need to work with others it's through your most um you know your dearest connections with other people and partnership with other people that you will attract abundance in your life and the more, more joy if you if you think you have to do everything on your own and by yourself that's a block for you. If you think it has to be my way or the highway, that's gonna be a block for you. So you need to cultivate being a team player 
And this is where you're going to find and attract more success and abundance in your life. If your part of fortune is in the eighth house, you know, this is a calling for deep connection, for studying of the occult or anything that's, you know, really deep and um, transformative. Also, it's, it's very beneficial if you, um, you know, have an intimate partner or financial investments, you know, working with others, working with sharing resources with other people where your blocks would be would be a too much of a focus on materialism you know your focus what brings you more joy is that that sharing of connectedness with others if your part of fortune is in the ninth house for you you'll find just your greatest happiness and abundance you know teaching other people in publication law long long distance travel um, expanding your mind, opening your mind to other cultures and, and how other people live and a block for you that you need to, you know, be mindful of is, well, I know this to be true. You know, I, this is how, this is how we do it in my local area, you know, kind of f just leaning on the facts and, and not seeing the bigger picture. If your part of fortune is in the 10th house, you really have an opportunity to really create something of a legacy, really to create a, you know, a big career uh, success and rec recognition. And, you know, that abundance will be there for you as you work hard to achieve your career goals. And your biggest block um, or obstacle would be, you know, too much family responsibility, um, you know, or, or navigating, um, you know, your family patterns that may be patterns that your family's taught you that make you feel that you can't achieve su such success. If your part of fortune is in the 11th house, this is, um, this is the area of friendships and, and groups, associations. So it is those people that will help you, um, you know, achieve your dreams and make you happy and feel fulfilled and joyful. So, you know, being part of a group of people that you feel a connection to um, a higher value, a higher humanitarian cause, um, they're going to help you attract your greatest abundance and happiness. And, you know, where your blocks could be, you know, you could have creative blocks if you feel that creativity has to come from something um, personal. It's really uh, you'll feel most inspired when you're creating um, something that is inspired from from a group humanitarian uh, cause that you're called to work with. If your part of fortune is in the 12th house, this is a very spiritual house and this is a calling to really focus on your spirituality in this in this lifetime and that's going to bring you just peace contentment joy and abundance you are so connected to the universe and as you focus your attention and strengthening that connection with god and you know your higher power what you call it um, that that's what really brings you joy working in hospitals or ashrams or churches um, cultivating compassion uh, this is what really brings you joy and abundance in your life and abundance isn't always just money right abundance is love happiness joy and so that's how the 12th house part of fortune will receive such abundance in the light in your life 
and the blocks that you can um, face would be the sixth house so feeling that you know you're you're just so connected to something greater that you can't function on a practical level in day-to-day -day life so finding a balance with that you know making your day-to-day -day acts an act of devotion to god or something like that that'll help work with that energy so i hope you enjoyed um our talk here today about the part of fortune and i wish you all so much abundance and blessings and joy in your life thank you so much for watching i am helene from heart house astrology you can follow me on instagram or youtube i would love it so much if you did that thank you for watching bye